about Ken Quinn in the corner, if he wants to have his poultry check so that he can sell his exotic birds for the house to be on the end. That's okay. where it's at. We will we cover that. We, we cover that for that sort of thing because that's just like the birds in paradise. We're not going to Okay. I, I understand there might be some changing on that, but I'm not yeah. entirely I'm sure. sure. So I think I can change. Yeah, that's saying now. It may not be true later, but yeah. in um, this response so far, we pay for those sort of things for small um, um, flock owners that um, need a permit. Again, that, and that testing applies to poultry. Well, okay. it doesn't. Though. I mean, for <coughs> business continuity. Yeah. It, but he's only concerned with small business, like the, yeah. the group I just visited yesterday. We had to go and test that person's birds, and we paid for it. The response pays for it. Uh, we've instituted this quarantine on that person, and we are affecting her business, so we, we have to pay. Uh, one more question. You mentioned hay. I also bring horses, um, but I don't have chickens. Uh, what would you recommend for guarding my land against virus when I'm bringing hay in? I mean, I do actually buy off a place that only sells hay. They don't, they don't have a livestock store. Stuff. I should yeah. they avoid the, uh, the guys that sell chickens as well as hay. I mean, if you want to be super careful, that's what you would do. Um, I mean, because you're not putting hay in with your birds in your own dalmatian birds, the risk is not very high. So, um, and I don't know what you're feeding, but again, if there's sunlight or heat, then that can help to inactivate it, but it's not 100% like bring a flake home and open it. But it's not going to affect, it doesn't sound like you have any particularly susceptible animals in your property, so. No. Cranes or cranes? Any wild bird species can get this virus, but they're typically not um, going to. I, I'm actually down in San Diego, so oh, I'm still at San Diego. I'm just asking yeah. for future. Yeah. Gotcha. And when you come from this meeting, make sure you know. Yes. 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 And yet, what you are telling us is I can go to Magnolia Bird Farm, I can buy a bird there, exotic bird, and I can still head down to San Diego with it, correct? So where's Magnolia? Orange County. Orange County. Uh, Orange County is not in the zone either. Actually, LA. Let's say. Think about LA. Let's say. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, only part of Riverside is in the quarantine. Only part of San Bernardino is in the quarantine. But all of LA County is in the quarantine. But, but again, you answer that question. Oh, no, no, you're the expert. Do you think you can do that? I would tend not to at this point, um, no, but I do good. also Lately, any birds that I bring in in 30 day quarantine yep. call away from all my other birds. Yep. So that was my next question. Well, like 30 days walking out for these birds to show attraction if they're not what I'm saying. So for wild birds, for exotic birds, if you were really worried, you have to test the patient, right? Because these parents can become intermittent shutters and shut them up for a year. But, but my, um, the point I was trying to make. Again, that regional quarantine is just for poultry. That's why I wanted to dance. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is just for poultry. However, we want to be careful. Yes. yes. When, when you depopulate a backyard, besides the birds, what else What else do you have to do? Do you take any uh, of the soil? Do you take the building that the birds are in? Do you take the utensils and tools that they're using around the birds? What do you, what do, you do? I have not. I need my answer. So, so in 2002, uh, they are, are, um, people would joke that it was a beautification project because we had all this infection in back of the country, and we would go in and we would take all the equipment out, we would clean the dirt, um, you know, the place we left it cleaner than it was when we got there. Um, but now what we do is we use this thing we call fallow period. So we have the place remain um, no birds for 120 days. And to enforce this, we visit them 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. If they um, uh, have birds there, then we give them a notice of violation and they get fined. And then they have to start the fallow period again. So um, we're not cleaning things, we're not taking things off, we're just letting the sunlight and uh, the yeah, yeah, the better use of our resources. Is, is the fine rate substantial? Um, I don't know enough about the fine rate. It is schedule. It's like, and it has thousands. I bet it's more than the chickens are there. <laughs> yeah. But in general, we're there to help people, right? So, so I mean, this is recorded, right? I mean, we try to help people as much as possible, even if they violate it. Because sometimes there's a language barrier. There's been language barriers. People Maybe not understanding. Maybe we missed a bird, you know, because we can't get all the birds. I mean, we try to get all the birds, but some fly over the fence, and we look for them, and we have wildlife services go after them. I have a question, but 
you talk about that a little bit. Uh, I was, I'm interested in finding out about the legal aspect of this. Like right now we know that we're not supposed to transport birds from a place to a place, but uh, if people do it anyway, what can they expect? If they're caught, I mean, okay, so again, it has to be poultry. Only poultry. Only poultry. Okay. Or poultry, or, or non, like, non-poultry species housed with poultry, okay? okay so if now all you have is case... canaries or parakeets and you want to move them, move them. Okay. Okay? The, that quarantine does not apply to those. If he wants to take his silkies and go sell them to somebody else, he needs a permit for that. And any idea on the fines? Pardon? Any idea on the fines? How much are they? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They are. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. It's pretty steep. Yeah. Yeah. I they they are producing very low fines for breaking this. Now, so, can I so, just read it for a second? I think you guys would be interested. What poultry is? It says on the regional quarantine that I gave to Andrea. I'm just going to share with you all. It says poultry. This includes all chickens, turkeys, turkins. Pheasants, peafowl, guinea fowl, quail, ducks, geese, swans, uh, gallinules, doves, pigeons, grouse, partridges, Franklin, uh, tenemo, I don't know, tenemo? Tenemo, tenemo. Ostriches, ratites, um, uh, brea, emus, cassowaries, and um, hatching it for everyday eggs. What? So, So if it's on the same property, and the, the chickens that you, that you might have are completely separated from the other species of birds. Or the poultry is separated. Can you move them or you can't move them? The others. In other words, they're not intermingled with the with parrots like like this this guy has, but they're completely separated, but on the same property. I will say, do you have a tortilla that says they're housed on the same property? So the definition of house. Same property. But also, like, where where are you located? Like, are you in the Orange County for sure? Orange. So you would. Yeah. So he's okay. Like, he's just looking yeah. for clarification. He's just curious. I get it. I wish you that. Do you mind? Like, if you we get there. Well, I mean, but can we hold that well, there until we get to the map? Honestly, my answer to this question is it's, it doesn't matter if they're separate. If they're your birds, you're the one taking you're care the of the chickens. Going. You take care of the parents. Exactly. It's not biosecure. It's not biosecure. So that's where right. if we could send a team out to evaluate how you're doing this and say, okay, if you, you know, change clothes between your non-poultry and your poultry, or you have separate workers who never care for the other side and they change, you know, come up with a biosecurity arrangement for that. And then they might want to test those birds just to be sure. And, and then they would determine from that point whether permits are needed. Yeah, so, um, or would you guys be willing to do that with a, a bird mark coordinator? With a pardon? A bird mark coordinator. Because uh, well, I, I travel around with a bunch of bird breeders and mm -hmm. uh, sell supplies, food. And okay. we go from town to town all over California, sometimes Las Vegas actually have a question about Las Vegas as well. Um, uh, so would you guys be willing to do some kind of compliance uh, verification with the bird mark so that uh, you could, we could say, yeah, we're biosecure. To help then, you come up with a plan? So, no, not no. just for a okay. plan, but just to say because um, uh, the coordinator is getting a lot of mixed information from different agencies, the two different agencies. And um, uh, one of them said you can't move supplies within a quarantine area. I have a copy of an email with that from, uh, I don't know if it's a vet or a representative, um, but uh, so my, my question is, is that would there be a way for us to comply with, with both agencies so that we could continue to have our bird marks? That would be a, a question we'd have to kind of pose back up the chain a bit. There are um, teams, not us, working with like the live bird markets. And so that may be more along, and there, you know, we have to work with the feed companies and whatever. So that may be more of an enhanced biosecurity plan. But what kind of bird market? It's like a spot. That's why I think the protein says all exhibitions. Yeah. 
don't know how it works for your students. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get, I mean, if you're outside of the regional quarantine, you know, you could do it's okay. And if it's only um, but exotic birds, they're not. Well, here's the problem. <coughs> she has vendors, bird breeders, and bird importers, let's call them, um, coming out of the quarantine area to attend something, say, in Bakersfield or mm -hmm. in. Or coming from a quarantine yeah, area. Yeah, coming from a quarantine area. She's been told that at this exotic bird expos that she can't bring, she can't hold these expos anymore, even though they're outside the quarantine area or even within the quarantine areas. There are no chickens. Sometimes there's big quail, but she could ban those. And same with everybody's bird mart in Pomona that got canceled. Not a big chicken population there, so really they could have just fed the chickens. I mean, what happened there? So, so exhibitions are um, discontinued. But see, this is a good case where call us or call the sick bird line. If it's exotic birds only, there's no restriction on movement. So that's but just another miscommunication that we haven't done. Some of those exhibitors also keep moving the property. And so that's where it's like exotic birds like a special case and, and yeah. to try and get clarification. Okay. And, and so it, yeah, yeah. Can we have a slide yeah. show that? Yeah. So I'm just going to quickly go through this. Um, disinfect hand gel, Clorox wipes, Lysol spray. Use these things. You know, use them. They are there to help you not prevent, not spread disease. Organic matter, like feces or mud, can help protect the virus from, if you spray disinfectant on something covered in feces and mud, the disinfectant can't get down to where the virus is. So you have to scrub <coughs> stuff, you have to remove that organic matter, mud, feces, secretions, so that the disinfectant has a chance to work. How far down? I mean, you're not going to ever really, it depends on your gap. Yeah, I can't give you like a, a solid Clean and disinfect all tools and cages. You know, that 10% bleach. Um, Vercon, use, disinfect stuff and then dedicate it. This doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go to my front yard where, you know, I'm, I'm pruning the roses and they're wild birds. Can I just make a note? There's an awful lot of disinfectants that are very, very toxic to birds. So make sure that whatever you're using, she's mentioned Vircon is, is cleared for birds, although we don't want them oh. bathing in it. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't um, say clear. I would say well, nothing in, like none of the aerosols from that or yeah, whatever that should touch the birds directly. So um, this is all for our feet, yeah. surfaces, and, yeah. Yeah. and cages and rich and well. Yeah. Exactly. Let that dry. <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is. Like Seppo, you say this is it it with bleach or, or how how you mix it, how it throws. So the, the, the bleach is one part bleach in nine parts water. In nine parts water. We've, we've got these for you. It's about cleaning and disinfecting. And it explains that on there. So yep, so there's one of the And then people will make, you know, when we spray the car tires, we use those like hand pump garden sprayers. So you kind of pump them to get the pressure. And you can use that, you know, if you've scrubbed up your cages or whatever equipment um, to get the organic material off, and then you want to spray it and let it sit. That's a totally easy, nice way to do it, but you're not going to dump the whole thing or wipe it. And there's the one to nine right there. So sprayers, cleaning supplies, you know, use gloves, foot baths. So foot baths are good um, if they get, so bleach, again, you have to be changed every day in a foot bath because it doesn't, it evaporates, it doesn't, it goes back. Vircon will last you longer. Um, if this becomes, as long as the solution is clear, you know, it's not cloudy, then it should still be okay. Um, after, for at least a few days, but if it starts to be 
County and I see one spot there and you only quarantine portions of this your is site. not all the cases that we have this isn't yeah. even so it, it's I'm not sure what the threshold was I didn't make this map yes um, this is by far not all the cases that we have it's more of an intensity of numbers to reported cases Permit. 
this. So they're permitting process for that. To apply for the permit, here's the email address. This is for if you want to get permitted for your property, SFS, like San Francisco something, permits a CDFA. And that permit is good for? It varies based on the risk. So that's why it's very individual. You know, which it which property, you know, what is on the farm? What are you moving? What's the risk of that? What is your testing schedule? You know, all of those things then feed into how long your permit will be. No, I mean, what is it good for? That permit. The duration? Doing, you know, trying to do permits. 
is for the on the up and up if they're not actually needed, like for poultry. It would take up too much of our resources. As much as we love that people would want to show, you know, hey, I, I even though I don't need it, I'm applying testing, applying for a permit to move frequently. It, it's that would stretch our resources. So. Are you getting an injection of money from the feds now, or? Well, that's what I mean. We're on the fence, so <laughs> USDA okay. and CDFA were working jointly together. Right now, it's still a CDFA uh, CDFA response. Um, we're providing manpower support, not a lot of money, but that's supposed to be changing soon. We keep asking when, 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 when. Contact your lawmakers. Yeah, Especially on a federal level, your Congress people. Yeah. Contact them to help us, help all of us get resources. Because this affects, you know, trade, poultry, and other states. And, and we want to get, get it back out of our country. We don't want it here. When was the last time you guys had a positive test? Pardon? The, wall. the last time you had a positive test? Can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, our things popping left and right. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Current. Yeah. Okay. USDA does publish new cases as well. I think on a weekly basis, you can check their website and see how many new cases were tested in the. I think they're in the. Um, another. I just wanted to say to you too, I mean, I, you probably already know this, um, that like isolate the birds if they're coming from uh, a regional quarantine and you could even test them, you know, you could take, have your vet come out and test the birds or you could take the birds to the vet, it's not a super expensive test. Well, from my standpoint, that's kind of dangerous. I don't want to bring <laughs> birds that have a possibility of being... I, I mean, I agree with you, yeah. yeah I would I'm jeopardizing everything I have. Yeah. I'm not worried about the few that I bought, I'm worried about all the birds that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything different with pigeon breeders and keepers considering their birds are often free flying? Does it matter? Um, so within the quarantine zone, those birds which are considered poultry by legal definition have to be contained. They are not to be flying, correct? And are they allowed to sell them, trade them, move them? They are subject to all the same requirements as poultry, so no movement without you know authorization, which would be testing and the word is getting out to them, and they're, yes, they're hearing about this as well. I think they're still flying. Well, I mean, yeah. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Yes. What's the problem? Exactly. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. We have a lot of big pictures of us. We do the same thing as you. We, we are. We are. Kind of, that's his job. We're, yeah, we're just, yeah. He's, we're covering for him today. But, uh, but yes, there's outreach to all of these kinds of meetings. We really appreciate you. Have this dialogue with us because we want to have our our group this you know responding wants to have dialogues with the communities that are affected and understand each other. And if you have ideas, we welcome them. Yes. You can email Ricardo directly or call our sick bird line and let us know you have my email. No. And and if we call your sick bird line or one of these phone numbers you've given us, are we going to get the same story as we've got from you guys? Or well, it's, it's, it's evolving, right? It's evolving nature, so the message changes as the disease situation evolves and our strategy to deal with it evolves. So, apologize that we can't say here's what it is for the next whatever period. Um, that's just kind of, yeah. And if any of you guys want to work on the response, we have a job fair on Wednesday. <laughs> Got more slides?